Hey, so I'm here today with Catherine. Catherine, do you want to introduce yourself and the agency? Yeah, of course. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Catherine Strachan. I am the managing director of Copyhouse. Copyhouse is a content marketing agency specializing in technology and fintech. So we work with some really cool brands doing some really cool things. Uh, we essentially cover everything from workshops where we build the core messaging to the strategy and content production, content production being copywriting, content design and social media now. Um, and then we wrap up with an impact report. So we offer quite a comprehensive A to Z. I've grown the company from just me as a freelancer to a team of 34, where we are today, um, and taken us to over a million pounds in revenue, which is really exciting. So it's been a really exciting growth journey. We've only been going for about three years now. We just turned three on Sunday. Um, and it's been, yeah, it's been a wild ride. I can imagine. And, and yeah, that, that kind of growth in three years, is, is that, from your point of view, has that been relatively organic or was that something that you planned? Yes, it's been organic. It all happened by accident. <laughs> Happy accident. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and out of curiosity, I mean, uh, particularly with things like fintech stuff, um, what kind of geographies do you cover? Are you UK based? Are you European? Are you kind of global? Uh, UK and Europe, because we expanded into Europe this year with setting up Copyhouse Europe. So I actually just got the official documentation saying that Copyhouse Europe is officially 100% set up. It was a very long process. Um, so we've expanded into Europe and we have four European employees as well, which has yeah, been, been really great. If you think back across that three year period, what do you think was the like the biggest mistake or challenge that that you made within the agency? Can you kind of pinpoint that and explain that? I mean, I think the biggest mistake is I can sometimes be too trusting um, and hiring is hard. Um, it's really hard. I mean, it's almost impossible to get right when you've only got, you know, an hour and maybe an hour and a half um, to get to know somebody and to get to know if they're going to be a cultural fit and to know their skill sets. It's really difficult to pick somebody who, you know, is going to be a good addition to the company. And there's definitely been a few bad hires that I've made. Um, and I've definitely been let down um, a couple of times. And that's had big impacts on the business as well. Um, so I guess my biggest mistake has been hiring the wrong people. But I guess on the flip side, I have to like pre preference this as well because I do have a really strong team. So I've also been able to manage some, or to hire some really great people as well. So it's not like it's been all bad, but um, we have made a few wrong choices with like senior hires, which then had a big impact on the company. Um, you know, most of the people we've hired have been brilliant, which is why we are where we are today. Mm -hmm. But it's it always hurts when you're quite a sensitive person like I am um, and those people let you down. Yeah, it's tricky as well, isn't it? Because, I mean, depending on the level that you're hiring at, it has a, like a direct effect on the business when it comes to throughput and delivery. But it has that indirect effect on the team and you when it comes to personality clashes or feeling like you're carrying a person or feeling like you can't trust a person to be an integral part of a team. And those softer things, as you mentioned, are really hard to tease out in a relatively short interview process. It's only when somebody gets choppered in that you suddenly realize, you know, based on performance or based on feedback from team members that there's an issue. Um, what kind of impact did it have on the team and, and what kind of impact did that have on you personally? I mean, it sounds like it's quite a, a you know personal setback. I have to remind myself to look at the bigger picture and that like 80, 90% of the people that we've hired have been absolutely brilliant. And that, you know, it's only the smaller percentage that have perhaps not been so good. Mm. So I have to keep perspective. So it really hurts sometimes, especially if you're close to these people. Um, and they let you down or do something happens, um, that's really hard. So I guess like my personal, the personal impact on myself was, you know, feeling almost guarded, like, oh, I shouldn't trust anybody anymore. Like, can I really trust everybody else who's here? You know, feeling like that. And you kind of have to like keep, your, keep yourself in check and remind yourself, no, like, you know, that's just that person, you know, it doesn't mean it's everybody else, you know, don't lose trust, don't lose faith. And everybody else, I guess, is the main thing there. 
Um, yeah, I mean, of course, it has an impact on the wider team as well. Um, and sometimes, you know, if if they weren't working with them, they, they might have had like a good relationship with them, but not seen their day to day. So not have realized, you know, the scale of the problem. So I guess there it's about transparency and, you know, kind of as much as possible telling people like the reasons for some of the decisions of, you know, letting that person go or whatever um, mm -hmm. and helping them to understand, you know, the wider context and what's happened. And, you know, normally when you paint it out like that for people, they do like the, the team does understand. And they're like, oh yeah, of course, you know, that makes sense. Um, yeah. So I guess it's, managing human relationships which yeah running an agency is all about because agencies are built on people on both sides you've got people internally and you've got people externally uh, that you rely on you rely on your clients you rely on your team it's about managing keeping all these people yeah happy and feeling safe and secure and confident and i mean obviously you've you've pretty much found the solution i mean it may happen again, but it's very unlikely to go from, I think, what do you say, kind of seven up to 34 now. And I noticed, as I mentioned before we started, you're hiring again. There's, there's, there's opportunities that you're putting oh, out there on LinkedIn, yeah. so you're in that growth curve. But I guess you 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 found the solution. You worked out what the solution actually was. I mean, what, what is that? What was what was your secret to overcoming that that challenge that you had? Yeah, I mean, I think it's almost impossible to for every single hire to be 100% be perfect right choice, especially when you're hiring as quickly as we are. I mean, perhaps if you're only hiring a few people a year, you know, the your chances of stuff like that happening are a lot less, but you know, when you're hiring, what's that, like 20 people a year, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's almost impossible um, to, you know, not have any errors, but I guess it's about accepting that business is a lot like life going to get a you know you're going to get stuff right but you're also going to get stuff wrong um and looking at the processes obviously that underpin the recruitment so obviously recruitment I, I don't believe that recruitment processes should go on forever and you know be seven eight nine step interviews but there are things that you can do to kind of minimize that uh i mean one of the things that i did was i kind of stopped being involved in recruitment um unless it was for a senior role because it's so time consuming um but kind of what we're going back to now is having some input on from me on every person who's hired because you know as the founder of the company I play quite a big role in our culture and our leadership. Um, and I've noticed that the people who have been the best hires have been people who I've had uh, some say over in hiring rather than just passing it over to the team completely. So I know, you know, we do have a two person HR team um, and, you know, they do the bulk of it, but, you know, just having a quick sense check from myself has helped to find some of the better people out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess some of that will come down partly to your instinct and also the fact that you carry the mission statement, you've got the DNA, you've got the culture. Those, those are the kind of softer things that you'll have an, an intuition for. If you could, like, spin it all back, let's, like, go back three or four years. So you're just kind of starting out. I mean, knowing that you needed to grow, knowing that you needed to acquire team members what's the kind of advice that you would have given yourself back then in, in that horrible hindsight, uh, you know, look, looking back over things, what, what do you think your, your, your biggest pieces of advice would be? Um, I mean, I think I was pretty slow at the beginning to hire because it wasn't until coffee house was about a year old that I did hire anybody. And then I kind of hired four people and no, three people at once. And I think, um, looking back, you know, it would have, should have been more well planned out, you know, having a longer term recruitment strategy, which we definitely have now. Um, but yeah, and bringing people in, you know, a bit sooner. So, yeah, I think, um, I think I do most of it again. I mean, I probably wouldn't have hired the people who I'm obviously not <laughs> mentioning by name, uh, but you know, that's, that also came with really important learning opportunities. One of the things I like, you know, don't necessarily like, I don't tend to do it with my life where I look back and say, you know, I wish I'd done that differently because everything I've done, even when it's not been 
the right thing or the best thing has created learning opportunities that then means that I wouldn't be where I am today if mm -hmm. that hadn't happened. So it's really difficult. Like I wouldn't want to repaint anything because those things were pivotal, pivotal. Um, and even, you know, those, those people that we hired that didn't work out, you know, they had a, they had an impact on coffee house in some shape or form and taught us lessons or, you know, um, added value in some way. So uh, yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't have hired them, but, uh, I don't regret it too much because we are where we are now and you know we're in a much stronger position today obviously than we were a year ago or two years ago or three years ago um and yeah that's that is one of the great things is every like bad opportunity creates an opportunity to like rebuild something yeah. and to do something better so you know that person leaving or um you know having to let go of that person that means that you know what you want in that role then knows, then makes it, you know, really clear who you need, what kind of personality, what skill sets, um, and kind of better equips you to make smarter decisions on the next hire. So, you know, we've never lost anybody and not replaced them with somebody who was like the next level up. Um, yeah. yeah. And I guess, you know, as we've gotten bigger, we also obviously have more budget to be able to hire. So, you know, we can hire somebody who has that extra skill or that extra experience. Um, yeah, so it just creates opportunities, really. Yeah, and I think there's a couple of things in what you said that are really important, and that is that things are constantly changing. And even the worst things that happen to you and happen to your business should, could and should be opportunities to actually learn from and, and ideally not do that again or find a different way around the problem but yeah if you're hiring the same people again you know that that will be slightly crazy but le learning from learning from the past and moving forward is always important a wild card question i'm going to throw this in there um have you found since lockdown and you know the changes in in where people find their passions and the way they want to work have you found that that has made your kind of staffing and hiring and recruitment process slightly easier? Are you finding people out there that perhaps before all this crazy lockdown stuff happened, um, you would have found harder to, to source? Uh, I guess it's a difficult question for us because most of our hiring has been during the pandemic. I mean, mm -hmm. when the pandemic hit, we were only four people. So most of our hiring has been during the pandemic um, and we're fully remote as well. So, I mean, I guess, yes, because before the pandemic, we only really hired within and around Edinburgh, even though we were, you know, we were hybrid even back then. Um, you know, we hired people within Edinburgh and weren't really hiring fully remotely. And now we do hire fully remotely. And now we also, you know, have a team in Europe. So not only do we hire remotely, but we also hire in different countries. So how we hire, how we hire and who we hire has definitely changed because we're able to have a much bigger recruitment pool. We're able to look at different countries, you know, when we've had skill shortages. So like last summer when we were trying to hire an account manager, you know, we had three or four months where we really struggled to find an account manager. You know, I think everybody was experiencing that last summer. Um, and what we did was we actually decided to go to Europe. So we posted the role in Spain and Italy and, you know, some of these countries that predominantly have, you know, a really high unemployment, but have really talented people who, you know, want to work. Um, and by doing that, you know, it changed the game. So we went from not being able to find account managers in the UK to having more account managers than we knew what to do with. <laughs> so going to a different market, um, you know, and having that flexibility is really key to finding good people. And you're one of those great examples of a business that's actually like head down work stuff out thrive through that period regardless of anything else that was going on so kudos to you yeah thanks i mean it hasn't always been easy um i mean when when the pandemic hit we lost like half of our clients overnight so yes we have done well during it but i think you know it's always really important to paint both sides of the picture because it's easy to look at linkedin or you know social media and go wow that you know everything's perfect i can tell you things are not 110 <laughs> perfect 
<laughs> well, th this was kind of the reason for launching this this side project was was my frustration, I guess, with a lot of what I saw agency owners and founders putting out online and knowing behind closed doors, having coffees with them or having Zoom sessions that there were challenges that people were overcoming. You know, people are people. And as you, you perfectly pointed out, like an agency is just a group of people connected together, providing a service. And in that is important to let people know that there are a myriad of different sides to running a business, not just the glossy stuff and the vanity metrics and the, hey, we've won an award, but actually we're here because we got through these challenges that we found along the way and nobody really showed us what they were. I'm hoping through this series and through amazing agency owners like you that can kind of break bread and, and share in insider rough patches with other people. And maybe, maybe people will avoid them or maybe people will suddenly notice that there's something going on in their agency or their business that maybe they need to address that's that's the reason for the session anyway and i, I really do appreciate you coming in and and sharing your um, your thoughts and ideas with us where can people find out more about you uh, so the best place is probably my linkedin profile um happy for you to put the link in the show comments yep. um yeah probably my linkedin or to reach out to me via email at Catherine at coffeehouse.io. I will drop all of the good stuff somewhere around this, or if it's if it's the podcast version, I'll work out how the hell to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine, listen, thanks for your time. Appreciate you uh, joining us today. No worries. Thank you for having me.